Fashion applies pressure from every angle. It's in our heads as much as it's on our bodies. Advertising, peer pressure, and media all play a role in dictating the trends we wear. Today, however, this has contributed to a culture of excess. The truth is, the fashion industry is no longer what it used to be, and in the long run, it's not sustainable. In the 90s, a new wave of fashion designers decided to express their opposition to the industry and formed anti-fashion. Anti-fashion was born during a time of political instability. Anti-fashion is radical creativity and apparel and it does not follow the mainstream fashion trends. Today, I'll be explaining how high-profile designers use anti-fashion to protest an overly saturated industry that is killing the planet. We can learn a lot about what's wrong with the industry from the Anti-Fashion Manifesto published in 2015 that I see that fashion is no longer part of the avant-garde. And this is why we move from uh, fashion to clothes, and this is why we are stagnating as, a, as an industry. Fashion has gone from an art form to a mass production industry that seriously harms the planet, and Kylan Flock can tell us more about what the problems are. I'm a lecturer in the textiles, merchandising, and fashion design department. And one of the courses that I teach is Introduction to Textile Science. Um, and we consider the textile process from the very beginning to the very end. Uh, so for me, there's three big things that come to mind when I'm asked about sustainability in fashion or textiles. First, there's the pollution that's caused by the production and use of man-made synthetic fibers, um, which is primarily water pollution. Second, there's the problems we have in our landfills of clothing, which is non-biodegradable, and textiles can leach pollutants into the ground from the landfill and then eventually into our groundwater. Now that's often associated with man-made textiles, um, but it's also linked to some natural fibers once they've been dyed or finished or processed or treated in any other way, um, because then those chemicals can leach into the ground as well. The third big issue that I think about, um, that I also think is important to consider, is the water and chemical use associated with producing natural fibers in ranching or farming. So no matter what you're doing to get your fibers, there's some issues to, of environmental uh, sustainability to consider. Like Kylan said, we know there's an issue, but how did we get here? Let's take a look. In the 50s, consumer culture and mass production took a hit on how we consume fashion. Then in the 60s and 70s, we got all these political movements that said, hey, wait a minute, doesn't this harm the planet? In the 80s, however, it seems like we backtracked a little and got distracted by glamour and overconsumption. That's when anti-fashion said, enough is enough, let's do something about it. High-profile designers made statements showing a rather unconventional side of fashion. Yoji Yamamoto, a Japanese fashion designer, brought his anti-fashion take to Paris. Yamamoto hates being described as a fashion designer and claims to hate fashion. Through his designs, he shows the dark side of Japanese culture and values timeless artisan pieces. One of Yamamoto's most famous quotes is, I think perfection is ugly. Somewhere in the things humans make, I want to see scars, failure, disorder, distortion. Around the same time, another Japanese fashion designer gained a lot of attention. Rei Kawakubu is the founder of Comme des Garçons and her aim is to stretch the canvas, to break the notion of clothes at the seams and deconstruct what fit, form, and flattery mean. Her most anti-fashion-like quote is the corporateness of the fashion industry tends to take away or distort the freedom of creation. Like Yamamoto, Kawakubu brought her work over to Paris where she created the brand Comme des Garçons which literally translates to light boys. Through this label, she produced clothes that redefined fashion and challenged conceptions of feminine beauty. Arguably, one of the most mysterious but intriguing anti-fashion designers is Macy Martin Margiela, a Belgian fashion designer. Although throughout his career, he's never given an interview and his face is not publicly known, and there's really only one photograph that proves his existence, he's made his mark 
revolting against the luxurious fashion world with garments of oversized proportions with linings, seams, and hems on the outside. Anti-fashion is an entire realm, and there's a lot of territory to cover. All three of these designers, however, represent the same thing, a revolution against the establishment.